Greg Soule is on the line, and he is uh, in the pub. I, I know who he is. He's the public information officer. That's okay. Thank you, Control. I appreciate your help. Greg Soule's public information officer, who's joining us from Nacogdoches County in Texas. Greg, what can you tell us? Well, we have several pieces of debris. Uh, that have been reported as coming down within the city of Nacogdoches. Uh, each and every one that we have reported to us, we're sending officers out to stand by with. Uh, and we're holding these areas secure until we receive further instructions from the federal government. How many, how many sites are you aware of? Uh, I, I don't have an exact number. All I know is there are several uh, at this point. And do you have any sense of how, I mean, at 200,000 feet traveling that fast, I imagine the debris field could stretch for many, many miles. Do you have right. any sense I, of it? I have no idea where else. All I know is we have some within the city of Nacogdoches, and again, we're asking the public if they find it to call us and, uh, and stay away from it. And do you um, have any reports, uh, uh, Mr. Sowell, of any injuries on the ground? No, not from here at this time, no. Okay. Uh, is this a fairly thinly settled area? Uh, well, we're a, a university town of approximately uh, uh, 30,000 people. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a small town, but then not, it's not a large town. Uh, and the areas that we're finding these, of course, are in town, but they're like we're finding some in the middle of the road and things like that. But uh, we have not had any reports of any damage or any injuries as of yet. Okay. And do, did you see or hear anything personally? Uh, no, sir. Did not. Okay. And w have you heard uh, first-person accounts from people there? No. Okay. Uh, and give us a sense of how much assistance you're receiving from outside right now. Well, at this point, we're 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 just beginning to gear up we're fixing to activate our emergency operations center with the city uh, and that's all that's forthcoming right now like I say there's several of us doing three jobs yeah. until we get everyone in. Uh, have you had any contact with federal authorities? Uh, I have not personally I know we've been in contact with the FBI yes. Okay the FBI mm -hmm. all right uh, Greg Soule with the Nacogdoches County uh, authorities there, public information officer on the line with us giving a sense of uh, what is happening on the ground there in Central Texas which is, uh, the shuttle was about 200,000 feet above central Texas when it broke up. We can only imagine the debris field is going to be rather uh, spread out and extensive. And uh, we caution those of you who listen to us and can hear us now, by all means not, please do not touch anything you suspect to be debris from the space shuttle. Uh, it, it could be very hazardous. There's, there's a toxic brew of chemicals inside these shuttles. Um, nitrogen tetroxide, hydrazine, uh, which can uh, cause you all kinds of health problems, short term and long term. It can burn you, it can give you cancer. Uh, all of the thrusters on the space shuttle, you see these little black dots down here in the end, these are where the thrusters are, are powered uh, in, in this combination of hydrogen and nitrogen tetroxide. And it is nasty stuff and a space shuttle is just a witch's brew of those kinds of things and you would be putting yourself in great peril if you were to pick up or handle any piece of the shuttle. It's federal property. Uh, you also might find yourself um, answering to authority. So please let it be. Pick up the phone. Let's listen to James Hartsfield one more time in Houston, please. Through contingency plans designed to secure all information and data pertinent to today's descent by the Space Shuttle Columbia. Communications with the Space Shuttle Columbia were lost at approximately 8 a.m. Central Time this morning at an altitude of about 200,000 feet above north central Texas as Columbia was en route to a landing planned at 8.16 a.m. Central Time at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. At the time communication was lost, Columbia was traveling approximately 12,500 miles per hour. Search and rescue teams in the Dallas-Fort Worth vicinity and in portions of East Texas and other pertinent areas have been alerted to the space shuttle contingency. All right, we're listening to James Hartsfield. That may be related to the space shuttle contingency that is located should be avoided and may be hazardous due to the toxic nature of propellant. All right, he's usually stating what I just told you. Shuttle. Let's bring him down if we could. James Hartsfield is a public affairs officer for NASA. He's sitting in a console there at Mission Control giving us uh, the latest on uh, what we know. The shuttle was traveling at 12,500 miles an hour. It's hard to even imagine that kind of speed. We're talking about something that exceeds the speed of a bullet uh, when you're seeing what you're seeing now at an altitude of 200,000 feet. Tremendous pressure and forces on the craft at that moment. Now, granted, the air is thin there, 
And the idea is to ease the shuttle in, slow down as you come in, and ease that, gradually apply the, the brakes, if you will, uh, but a tremendous amount of pressure. Now, the, the space shuttle fleet was designed to fly 100 missions each. Each air, uh, airframe was certified to fly 100 missions. And um, to date, the entire fleet has flown 113 missions. This was uh, Columbia's 28th flight. Um, and thus, it is well uh, below what would have been its, its useful capacity, at least as an airframe. Um, the, the, the target in all of this, the landing site, if you want to just take a look at it, uh, we could just give you a sense of where they head to. Fifteen minutes from where it broke up, and the space shuttle deorbit burn begins over the Indian Ocean, and the brakes just keep coming as it comes down for the, the world's most harrowing glider ride is really a good way to describe it as we zoom in on the Kennedy Space Center. And uh, what you see here is those, those are the launch pads. That's where Columbia left from 16 days ago. That's the big vehicle assembly building. That's where we view the launches, right in that spot right there. There's about, just to give you a scale, there's three miles in between those two sites. That's as close as anybody gets to a space shuttle launch, except for the crash team. And the crash team sits uh, about a mile away right there. Zooming in here, you see the vehicle assembly building. And down uh, the runway, this is runway 33, which is where the space shuttle uh, was headed. Uh, it's a northwest to uh, southeast runway, 15,000 feet in length. Um, not, not too terribly much longer than what you'd find at a big international airport, but much wider, 300 feet wide. Space Shuttle Columbia never made it to its intended destination today. Let's get uh, CNN's Patty Davis uh, on with us. Patty, what can you tell us? Well, Miles, the FAA is saying that it, it, it had not had any contact with the shuttle, that shuttle, of course, at about 200,000 feet uh, when it appears to have broken up. The FAA air traffic control would have come into play at about 60,000 feet, and I'm told it would have directed the aircraft in just like any other aircraft that it was bringing in. Uh, but it just did not get to that point. Now, the NTSB uh, would most likely play a role in this accident investigation, in the shuttle Challenger accident. It had a technical advisor role, uh, most likely would have that same type of role in this instance. Now, one safety expert, a former NTSB official, telling me uh, what probably you'll need to look at here since uh, terrorism seems unlikely here is an aging aircraft issue. Now I know Miles you said these shuttles meant to fly about a hundred missions but this particular shuttle some 22 years old and this uh, former NTSB official saying that that certainly uh, the age here could have played a role. Now as far as terrorism is concerned now for commercial aircraft uh, one of the things that uh, officials have been worried about recently is uh, surface to air missiles. Uh, we're told that however that the highest even the most sophisticated of those surface to air missiles could only reach about 60,000 feet in the air. So uh, not particularly a factor, not likely to be a factor in this case. Uh, one safety expert saying perhaps that uh, the only way terrorism could have played a role here, something had been placed on board perhaps. Miles? All right, let's listen in James Hartsfield one more time. Let's see if he has any news for us. James Hartsfield, Public Affairs Officer in Houston. Let's listen. Approximately 8 a.m. Central Time as it flew at an altitude of 200,000 feet and a speed of approximately 12,500 miles per hour toward a planned landing at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Touchdown for Columbia was scheduled for 8.16 a.m. Central Time in Florida. All right. He appears to Search be and rescue teams recapping in the what we know. So I'm gonna, we'll, we'll bring James down. And... Um,